Yeah. So we're pickling the water maker. <laughs> Not that kind of pickling. Oh, well, what, is, what are we doing? Yesterday was the last day of summer. Today is the first day of fall. It's actually Monday. <laughs> is it? Yeah. All right. Well, that means uh, fall maintenance on the boat. But one of the things that we do every fall is we pickle the water maker. What we're effectively going to do is place the water maker into a state of storage um, so that we don't have to worry about it over the winter and then we don't have to keep it in service. When we bought this boat, a water maker was new to us. We haven't had one on any of our prior boats starting to learn that system you learn that there's a fair amount of maintenance that goes along with it a water maker isn't as simple as just turning on a switch and it makes water when a water maker is in normal operation if you're not making water you regularly have to flush the system with with fresh water and what that fresh water flush is doing is preventing any biological growth from happening in the water maker so basically you want to prevent a science project from happening so that your water is always clear and drinkable and tastes good. In the winter, if you're not using the water maker, um, obviously we don't want to continue to flush it every week if we're not going to be using it. So it's best that we just place it into a dormant storage mode. Not all water makers are the same. So the procedure that we're going to go through today may not uh, be the same procedure for your water maker. There are all different types, uh, all different brands, and all different levels of automation on a water maker. We have a fairly simple water maker, so a lot of uh, the different things that we need to do on the water maker are more manual. Some of the automated ones do automated flushes, uh, they do automated sampling of the water um, to determine the quality of the water being made. On our system, most of those steps are manual. Another thing to think about uh, when you're placing your water maker into storage mode is will your boat be kept somewhere uh, where it could experience freezing temperatures? Because the procedure uh, in a freezing temperature climate is gonna be different than what we do today. Today we're gonna run a storage chemical through the water maker, but if you're in an area uh, that experiences freezing temperatures, then you wanna run a propylene glycol through the system, which uh, is essentially like a drinkable water safe antifreeze. And you also want to make sure that you have the correct percentage of glycol in the mix, otherwise you could still experience the biological growth. So lots of things to consider. Certainly consult uh, the manual of the water maker that you have. This is the way that we do our particular water maker uh, storage. Aboard Freedom, we have a Spectra water maker. It's a 12 volt DC powered water maker, so it doesn't have very high production of water. We make about 150 gallons per day, which averages out to about six gallons per hour. But the benefit is you don't need to run your generator to create 120 volts of AC power to run it. So there's, there's upsides and downsides having a 12 volt water maker versus a 120 volt AC water maker. We also have a component water maker which means the water maker isn't all contained into to one black box, if you would. The different components are kind of scattered through the lazarette, which is nice if you have a smaller boat and you don't have one large dedicated area for a sort of black box solution, if you would. So we have a separate feed pump and we have a separate membrane and they're located in two different spots. fight down here. You look comfy. Hopefully everyone's able to see what's going on. So the two main components of our water pump um, are right here. So there's a selector switch where we can select where the water draw is coming from. We have a feed pump which is, is pulling uh, the seawater and pressurizing it to about 50 psi. And then that feed pump um, is taking the water and going through a pre-filter. This pre-filter is a five micron uh, paper filter 
which is removing a lot of the, the large uh, particulate that might be in the water. Um, it goes through an accumulator, which tries to normalize uh, the pressure from the feed pump. And then that seawater is delivered up to uh, our Clark pump and our membranes, which are up here. So they're a little bit hard to see because they are uh, behind this box, but there's a, a Clark pump, pump which further pressurizes the water. And then these large cylinders, uh, there's one large one back here. This is our membrane. So that's what's actually filtering the water. And then uh, this particular hose right here is our brine hose. So all of the uh, salt water that you know, wasn't able to be turned into fresh water is returned to sea, uh, and that's called brine. And that's coming through this hose. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to do another flush of fresh water through the system. So it's uh, completely full of fresh water and all the seawater has evacuated. And then we'll start the uh, storage process. So normally when we run the water maker, this yellow selector switch is turned towards run. Um, really this is just a, a water valve, uh, with a, a three position water valve. So when it's in run, uh, what that's determining is that the water is being picked up from the sea. So down in the bottom of our bilge, uh, located ahead of, of this bulkhead in our engine room, there's a seacock where the seawater pickup is. That water comes through this sea strainer. Um, the sea strainer takes out a lot of the, the large uh, debris that might be in the water, like seaweed and things like that. Coming out of the output side of the sea strainer um, comes into the input of the Spectra water maker box. And basically when it's in run mode, the sea water is being delivered to this black pump. This black pump is pressurizing the water, again going through a five micron filter and delivering that water to the Clark pump and, and the uh, membrane that's the back in the back corner. So we're not gonna run it with seawater, we're gonna do a freshwater flush. So I'm gonna turn this yellow valve to off. When it's in off, now the water needs to be delivered from a freshwater source. So uh, in our case, we have a freshwater holding tank in our boat and a freshwater pump, and that water is delivered, there's a T in this freshwater line. It's delivered through this charcoal filter and to get the water flow started, I just need to take this gray valve and turn it on. And now we have fresh water that's entering this yellow selector. Then to get it to start pumping through the water maker, I just need to turn this switch on. And this will start the water maker pump. So right now, fresh water from the boat is being directed through the Clark pump in the membrane back here. And then this brine line is returning uh, any of the unused water overboard. Our fresh water flush is completed. We've run for about three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the feed pump off. And I'm going to also go ahead and turn this gray valve to turn the fresh water intake off. So now we know the entire system is full of fresh water. Now what we want to do is create a closed loop so we can introduce the storage chemical. To set up the, store, the closed loop, the first thing that we're going to do is remove this service cap. And we're going to set up a new line for introducing water into the system because we're not going to use seawater and we're not going to use the fresh water from our system. We're going to draw from a bucket. So to do that, I have a hose here that I'm going to plug into this service line. Then by rotating this yellow selector up to service, um, that indicates to the system that I wanted to draw water from that service port. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, place that hose into this bucket. And then the return line, which is the brine that typically goes overboard, I now want the return water to come to this bucket as well. So I have a closed loop. So to remove this brine line, this is just a uh, single push, quick disconnect. So I just push that button up and pull this brine line out and then replace this service hose into that port, just like so. Sean, are all these lines, do they come with a water maker or do you need to rig this up yourself? 
We didn't install the water maker on our boat. Um, I would assume that they probably come with these service lines um, or the previous owner may have uh, rigged these lines up themselves. And are these available at most boat stores like a West Marine if somebody went in and needed uh, to get this hooked up? Yeah, all the hose can be bought at you know any local hardware store. The This is just a garden hose fitting on this end. So if a kit didn't come with one, you could get a simple garden hose fitting uh, from your hardware store. This quick disconnect fitting for our Spectra water maker uh, might be difficult to find at a hardware store, so this may be something you need to consult the manufacturer with. And again, every manufacturer probably has you know different types of fittings to install these hoses. So we're going to introduce storage chemical uh, into the system and let it circulate for about 10 minutes. But before we can do that, right now this bucket doesn't have any water in it. So it's gonna, we're going to have a hard time drawing water into our intake hose if there's no water in here to begin with. So I'm actually going to go back to this freshwater mode and I'm just going to run it for a little bit and allow some of the fresh water to enter this bucket. If I turn the fresh water on and I turn the speed pump on. Okay, so now my bucket has some water in it. I'm ready to start the storage procedure. So I'm going to put this into service mode now. So the water is drawn from my bucket. And the other thing I'm going to do before I put the chemical in and start is I need to open up. There's a pressure valve on this Clark pump and you don't want to run the storage chemical through the membrane at high pressure. So you want to turn open this valve where my right hand is about a half of a turn. So I've done that. And now what I'll do is I'll start the pump to just get the water circulating and then once the water is circulating we'll open up the storage chemical and add it to this bucket so right now if i'm in service mode and i start the pump i should start drawing water into this intake line you'll see the water actually is coming right up the intake line and the return water is coming out of this hose Now what I have is I have a closed loop. So I know that the pump is primed. It's obviously drawing water from the bucket and returning it via my brine hose. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the storage chemical. You can buy this at Defender. Um, that's where I bought it. Obviously other marine stores may carry it as well. But SC-1 storage chemical is what Spectra recommends for this particular water method. And then the next thing we need to do is just set a timer and let it run for 10 minutes. Ten minutes are up. We're gonna turn off the pump. We're gonna disconnect all of the hoses, and then we're gonna put all fresh filters into the system. And I'm going to vacuum out and clean the sea strainer for the seawater pickup, and close the through hull uh, for the seawater as well. And then we'll be done. So now I'm gonna change the filters so that when we start things back up in spring, we don't have to worry about that. Everything's replaced and new. So there's two filters. Uh, the first filter is a five micron pre-filter that filters the seawater. And the second filter, which is up in this clear canister, is a charcoal filter. And this is a filter for filtering the fresh water when you're doing a flush on the system. So before I start opening up the housing for the seawater filter, I wanna make sure that the seacock is closed on the boat. Otherwise water is gonna start rushing in as soon as I open this up. So let's go down into the engine room and close the seacock. So the seawater intake for our water maker is down in the engine room. It's on the port side of the engine. It's located inside of this cover. So I'm just gonna go down here and rotate this 90 degrees. Just like that. Then I'll close this up. Then we'll go back and change the filters. So a great tool to have on a boat is a small shop vac. So 
so you can suck up water. So when I open these filter housings and when I open the uh, sea strainer housing, I'm gonna have the shop vac running so I can collect all of the seawater that's gonna spill out of them so that water doesn't just end up in the bilge. So the strainer housing's clean. I'm gonna put the strainer basket in and then I'll just return the cap. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is replace the five micron seawater filter. You need a filter wrench. It's just like a household filter housing. And you just put it up onto these ribs and give it a turn to the left. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. You got oh, it. Yeah, I remember you got things it. you tell me. And I'm just gonna wash this out in the sink as well so that the housing is clean. The housing's clean. Sean, where do you buy the filters? I bought all these at Defender, but again, most uh, marine stores either have them or can order them for you. There we go. One more filter to change, and that's the charcoal filter. So the charcoal filter is located uh, back here behind the water selector box. So same process, I'm gonna put my wrench up on top, unscrew it to the left, pull the housing, Replace the filter, and then when I'm done, I'll wipe everything up and we're call the job well done. <clears throat> or a job done, one way or the other. So that's it. That's how we prepare our water maker for the winter season so we don't have to do regular flushes on it when we're not using it. So boating isn't always uh, sitting at anchorages and enjoying a cold beverage. There's a fair amount of work that goes into it too. If there's any other maintenance type videos that you'd like to see, request those in the comments and let us know if you have any questions. Again, every water maker is different. If you have a water maker on your boat, consult the manual. But this is how you do a Spectra 150 water maker, putting in a storage chemical into it. Take it easy. Bye-bye.